Greetings, I am Colonel Ichabod Rhombus, and welcome to Xenos Analysis. When the Tyranids appeared in our galaxy, it did not take them long to start to develop new bioforms to suit the needs of war against those they encountered, and also to enhance and refine those forms as battle-illustrated floors or areas with room for improvement. The Hive Tyrant is essential to the efficacy of the swarm on the battlefield, and as the Hive fleet began to realize that the Imperium of Man is no morsel for them to simply consume, and these vile leader beasts were felled to the wrath of Bolta, Lasgun, and Autogun, the Terranids developed a new bioform to protect these linchpins of the swarm, and so the first Tyrant Guard began to appear. It has been theorized that the preternatural sturdiness and resilience to trauma shown by the Tyrant's Guard is the result of their repurposing of DNA from felled space marines. Fortunately, they have not managed to absorb the full potency of gene seed, which would, in effect, give them a shadow of the genetic material of the Emperor of Mankind himself, beloved by all. Of course, this has also spared them exposure to the aspects of flawed gene seed. Credence is lent to this theory in the initial exceedingly humanoid form which the Tyrant Guard presented, and in the addition of large chitin shoulder pauldrons that are almost a mimic of power armour. The first Tyrant Guard were tall and slender, perhaps more akin to warriors suggesting a development of that particular bioform into something more effective at protection. To fulfil this defensive role, the new design was somewhat unimaginatively merely granted a large chitin shield fused to two of the beast's limbs, while the other two limbs could be armed with one of the range of weapons that have become a staple for all subsequent generations of Tyrant Guard. Tyrant Guard have a dull intellect, either on par with, or perhaps even lower than the species of Gaunt. They are also blind, not only to remove a possible weak point, but to render them little more than synaptic puppets for a hive tyrant that they are grown to defend with unthinking and unseeing obedience. The tyrant's guard were quickly improved. They became much more dense of limb, transforming into a lumbering massive blockade of armour. The limbs that sported the rending claws became greatly bloated to allow them to cleave through even the thickest armour with appalling ease. These potent limbs were also bequeathed with chitin bucklers on the forearm for even more defence. The previous shoulder protection became a giant wall of segmented chitin that flowed down from the shoulders and arose to create a defensive hood for the head. The hands of the hive mind do not remain idle for long, and there have been further design changes made. The most recent version of the Tyrant Guard has seen the rending claw bucklers reduced in size and the upper body chitin plates fused into a single solid plate that extends out from their shoulders to deny weapons access through these overlapping sections. At this point, it was assumed that the Tyrant Guard had finally achieved the most effective format for combat in our galaxy. Such predictions did not anticipate the Optarius debacle. The war of attrition that was orchestrated in Optarius as a means to end the Tyranid threat acted instead as an evolutionary adrenaline shot. The Tyrant Guard emerged a little slower but that is because they are now weighed down with even more effective chitin armour and tougher flesh to make them more durable as they defend their charge. The abominations can now shrug off withering barrages of fire as they close upon their prey, and the bioweapons they carry into combat have also seen significant refinement. In addition to the ubiquitous rending claws whose keen edges can plough through even the most dense ceramite, treating such powerful defences as a triviality to its purpose of mayhem, the Tyrant Guard's upper limbs are grown in one of several configurations, because while the creature's primary purpose is to defend the synapse aberrations, 
It is also a behemoth in close quarter combat, and so it is armed with bioweapons to facilitate wanton destruction. Scything talons are fused talons of serrated bone and chitin, and are deployed by powerful muscles to allow them to stab and hack with exceptional speed. Crushing claws are crab-like appendages that require significant strength just to wield, and so they are generally found only on the larger tyranid bioforms. The weight of these weapons comes from their astonishing strength and ability to rip easily through even the thickest layers of armor to inflict the most grotesque levels of damage. And lastly, a lash whip paired with a bone cleaver. The former is a thick tendril of dense muscle and sinew tipped with a series of razor-edged thorns. It grows from the bearer's hand to act independently and even consumes organic matter it tears into because it is possessed of its own dull but nevertheless devious intelligence. Where previously the whip only came to bear when the guard was slain, at which time it would become maniac and deadly, lashing out at nearby enemy combatants to cause vengeful trauma. However, developments in Octarius now see the whip acting to accentuate the tyrant guard's senses, making its assaults more accurate than ever before. Whether this is the fearsome penetrating power of the rending claws, or the more brutal bone cleaver. The bone cleaver is a fresh variant of the bone sword, both being living creatures in their own right. The pommel of the sword is a living brain, with a subtle intellect that is devoted solely to maintaining its weapon body and their lethal monomolecular edge. Lacking psychic abilities or the power to radiate synaptic influence, the Tyrant Guard have always been unable to generate the piercing psychic might that makes the Bone Sword so much more lethal in the hands of such higher creatures, and so it was always a more crude weapon with which to bludgeon and hack. However, the Bone Cleaver has been enhanced with extra weight to make it a devastating melee weapon that can now penetrate armor and carve through flesh with far more efficiency. The Tyrant Guard have always served to intercept incoming assaults and protect Hive Tyrants and Swarm Lords alike as they move into the enemy ranks to begin the horrendous process of unprecedented slaughter. Previously, they were effective at throwing their armoured forms into the path of bullet, bolt and blast. But since the Octarius evolution, their ability to counter incoming fire is flawless. Until the last Tyrant Guard is brought down, the leader beasts of the swarm remain utterly invulnerable. The Tyrant Guard can be thought of as a living shield, wielded by the Hive Tyrant and the Swarm Lord. As these vile leader beasts advance, they hoist these shields to block incoming projectiles, and as these shields are demolished and rendered useless, they are cast aside. Only once all their shields are consumed, can they be assailed with ranged weapons, but if these shields reach close-quarter combat, they can now be considered puppets of their master, additional living limbs acting at the behest of the tyrants to bring their organic weapons to bear and allow these juggernauts to contribute to the massacre. In order to harm the most vaunted lords of the swarm, one must clear these bulwarks, and all too often, they allow the abominations they defend to wade into the midst of those for whom the great devourer has fixed its hunger. But by standing firm and remaining resolute in the face of the Xenos threat, the Imperium will prevail. Praise be to the God Emperor, beloved by all.